wondering the very best ways to spend your gems as a free-to-play player in Rise of Kingdoms? Today, we're going to be talking all about how you spend those hard-earned gems. Not the ones you get over here, but the ones you earn over time, and we'll help you deploy them in the very best way possible. This is a much more detailed breakdown than my ultimate free-to-play guide, and this was something that you all requested. So if you want to see more videos just like this one, consider throwing a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, and let's get right into the good stuff that is going to help you get some serious value with your gems. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and today we're going to help you on your journey toward T5 troops, deploy your gems in the very best way possible, and to be ready for all of the things you will consider spending them on over the course of the year to year and a half that it might take to get fully T5 troops at your disposal. In this guide, we're going to talk about spending your gems across a number of categories. Those categories are going to include exactly how many gems and when to spend them on the wheels, when to gem VIP versus other things, when to gem Books of the Covenant, and also special events that you should be saving your gems for. Last but not least, we'll talk about how you can get more gems literally every single day in Rise of Kingdoms, and we'll have timestamps in the description that you can use to navigate to any portion of this video that you'd like. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. We're a sponsored content creator, and I want to let you know that what we're describing really is a year to a year and a half journey worth of gem spending, so I don't want you to freak out about the amount of gems that we're going to describe your deploying intelligently, because I promise you, you'll get them, and if you're wondering how you'll get them, we'll have ways for you listed again toward the end of this video. Now, the first thing we need to talk about is actually events that sometimes take place around holidays that allow you to spend a small amount of gems for a huge amount of gain. There is an event that will require you to spend 7,000 gems to get an upgraded version of something that you are working on. I'll put that up on the screen off to the side so that you can see exactly what that looks like. That is always without failure one of the very best uses of gems in the entire game. Seriously, go no further in this video, take only that one thing away from it, and you've still done well. <laughs> but there's more we need to talk about. So save 7,000 gems on hand for holiday timeframes when you think that event might come around. At the time of this video, it's Halloween, which means we've got Thanksgiving, Black Friday, we've got Christmas around the corner, we've also got New Year's. There's a ton of events where we may see that 7,000 gem beautiful event that rewards you with a ton of good stuff. You want to have 7,000 gems for the upgraded version of the event. By the way, pro tip, and you'll thank me for this later, there is a setting if you head over to your account, you go to settings, you tap on general settings, you scroll down. This is very important. I need to make sure that you turn on gem use confirmation. As you save up ridiculous amounts of gems for commander wheels and other things, which is something I did on my restart project when I created a new account, I happened to be up late one night, delirious, taking care of my new baby. And I mean, it was like three in the morning. I was seeing double. I accidentally tapped the gem icon for literally gemming out the upgrade for a city wall level 23. It was disastrous. It burned through like 60,000 gems in a blink of an eye in the most inefficient way possible. So if you are smartly saving up your gems, which is what I'm advocating in this video, do yourself the big favor of turning on gem use confirmation. Because when I messaged in-game support, the same way that everybody else does, they kind of said like, hey, Chiskul, maybe next time don't click the gem button. <laughs> and there is this option in-game. So turn this on if you're accumulating lots of gems. Pro tip there, don't make the mistake I did. And like, look, you're going to be tapping through lots of menus, moving really quickly. As you accumulate ridiculous amounts of gems, which you might do as a free-to-play player waiting for some very important events where you go and spend them, I want you to have that turned on so you don't accidentally spend them in a really heartbreaking way. The next thing we need to talk about is Commander Wheels. I mentioned this as one of the primary uses of your gems as a free-to-play player, and this is especially true once you hit your T5 troops. But leading up to that point, you're going to have a lot of trade-offs. 
The first thing I want to talk about just very briefly is which commanders I think are worthy of your gems from Commander Wheels. So we're going to put this up onto the screen, a diagram that helps illustrate exactly when commanders will become available to you. This is based on your kingdom's age. I think the first commander you should go in on is going to be YSG at about 90 days of kingdom age. Now, when I say go in on, we need to talk about a little more of the other things we'll get to in just a second to help you figure out how many gems exactly you'll want to spend. But certainly for each of the wheels that Esong is here for, you will want to spin that wheel at least to 10 to get the extra five sculptures that come from that portion of your journey. And that's pretty easy to accomplish. A fun fact here with Commander Wheels is they always show up on the second day of a Mightiest Governor, that is the Barbarian portion of Mightiest Governor, uh, and you always have three specific Commander Wheels followed by a Universal Wheel. So for instance, you might have Esong, 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 and then a Universal Wheel, or depending on the cycle of your Mightiest Governor, maybe you'll have a Richard Wheel, a Universal Wheel, a Richard Wheel, and then an Esong, Esong, Universal, and so on. Without getting too into the details here, spin the wheel, get to at least the 10 spot there for the special unlock, and your goal when you're spinning a wheel as a free-to-play player is to hit the value tiers and not to go over. The next commander you're going to be really interested in is Alexander the Great, who will be available to your kingdom about 200 days in around KVK Season 2. Both of those commanders are phenomenal and exceptional. This isn't a commander guide, but it is a gem spending guide. After you've expertise both of those commanders, you'll have a much better idea which other commanders you might want to go for from wheels, or if you just want to use the gems for speed ups, which is also potentially viable at that time. Now you may be wondering, well like Chiskul, how am I going to have gems for spinning the wheel and doing the 7,000 gem event you're talking about? Like, come on, dude. You know, there's things that can be really distracting here. The courier station, don't spend your gems here. You need to save them for wheel events, because look, you spend like the same amount of gems to get speed ups and have the possibility of getting legendary commander sculptures if you do them in a commander wheel. So don't put gems into things in here as tempting as that might be. Same is true of spending gems in the VIP shop. You may think, oh man, I really want some speed ups from the VIP shop. Well, this is a bad use of gems because instead you could use those gems on a wheel, which also have speed ups on them, and you have a chance of getting Universal Legendary Commander Sculptures, Specific Commander Sculptures, all that good stuff. Speaking of which, I think that generally the Universal Commander Wheels are probably a good one for you to avoid in the early game. While you still have tons of other gem priorities, it's going to be really tempting, but I would not spend those past the free mark and the 50% off and like probably just stop there because you're going to have a lot of stuff you will want to spend gems on and we'll get to that in just a moment. In fact, one of the very first things that's going to come up where you're going to think, hey, Chiskul, should I spend gems on this, is going to be VIP. Now, VIP is potentially a very good use of gem spend, depending on how close you are to the targeted level. Keep in mind that you get zero value being halfway from one level to the next. So you either reach the next level or you don't. So dumping gems into VIP in an ongoing basis without actually hitting the next level is totally pointless. So this is something you really want to coordinate and organize, and we'll have a few ideas around that in just a second. I want to first show you the tiers that really matter. Early in the game, VIP 6 is really important. On an account I just created in Kingdom 2 to cover the new Heroic Anthem KVK format, which, by the way, we will be live streaming that, uh, you will want to get to VIP 6. I think I spent like 3,500 gems to jump up to VIP 6 for the second building queue. However, most players are a little bit further into the game and they're looking at something like VIP 10. The jump to VIP 10 is massive in terms of value. You start getting a gold key every day as well as a legendary commander sculpture and that is so much better than VIP 9. It is a very good point that a lot of you made in comments about my ultimate free-to-play guide that, hey, there are some thresholds here in which it makes sense to spend gems on VIP, and you are right. The question you need to ask yourself is actually something called a break-even calculation. I won't actually make you do math, but I'll explain it really simply. You will, at some point, naturally get to VIP 10. You could spend your gems to get there sooner. 
How many days sooner do you think you'll get there? And what do you think the gem value is of the stuff that's in here? Spoiler alert, it's like 1,500 gems worth of value a day, I would argue. 1,000 gems for the legendary commander sculpture, about 500 gems of value from a gold key on average. So when you're doing that math of, hey, like, what's it worth to me to get to this sooner than I would have otherwise, I would say, hey, about 1,500 gems per day. So that means if you were going to naturally get there in 10 days, you could also spend gems on it, and it would be the break even for that. Let me give a quick example with some basic math for how you would go about this. If you were, let's say, 15,000 VIP away from VIP 10, right? We know that's about 10 days worth of value, right? So every single day for 10 days, you get about 1,500 gems of value. So in 10 days, you would get 15,000 gems worth of value, which is the amount of VIP it would take to get to the next level. So if it's going to take you at your natural rate of VIP gain more than 10 days to get to this next tier, you should spend the gems on it. Does that make sense? If it's going to take you longer than the break-even time frame, spend the gems so you start getting that extra value right away. That makes a ton of sense. Or the simple answer is like, yeah, you can spend your gems on it and that's probably fine. Get to the VIP 10. It's worth it. There are specific times where you want to go and do that. We are going to cover that a little bit later in the video. More than gems events, though, is that special time frame where you really would want to focus that spending. Now, the next tier here where you want to spend some gems on VIP, potentially, is going to be VIP level 12. At VIP level 12, you get two legendary commander sculptures. And also, the same is true for VIP level 14. Now you're getting three legendary commander sculptures. There are also some other benefits you get along the way that you can start to account for when you think about like a break-even calculation. Once upon a time, I used to make really detailed spreadsheets and think that I was really being smart about it. But honestly, it's sort of an overcomplication of the whole thing. If you're close to the next level of VIP, you have the gems for it, and a more than gems event rolls around, yeah, it is probably a good idea to spend gems, get to that next level, especially if your rate of VIP gain is low, and that will be the case if you are not in an alliance that is spending lots of money in Rise of Kingdoms. Now, let's say your VIP is in a pretty good place, or you're nowhere near kind of the next tier of unlock from your VIP the next major consideration should actually be Books of the Covenant. Books of the Covenant are how you upgrade your castle. Your castle is a required building for your academy to get to level 25, as well as hospitals and other important buildings. And in order to get T5 troops, which you will want to do on your free-to-play account, you're going to have to get your academy to 25. Otherwise, that research will be blocked for you. And good news, by the way, you do get a 7% boost to your research speed when you hit uh, academy level 25 it's definitely worth doing that upgrade just for the research speed so you're going to need a lot of books of the covenant to upgrade your castle at level 25 to get there you need 5,000 books of the covenant i think to get to 24 it's 3,000 to get to 23 it's 2,500 a lot of people spend gems to get books of the covenant because the primary way that you can get Books of the Covenant in Rise of Kingdoms is going to be rallying those barbarian forts, which, by the way, are highly underrated as a use of your action points. Barbarian forts do drop a lot of action points uh, for your alliance in the alliance gift, which is actually like really very worthwhile uh, for an alliance to be doing this. But just to look at a kind of lower level one here, Books of the Covenant are the critical upgrade from a barbarian fort. It's pretty reasonable to spend a lot of action points rallying barbarian forts, accumulating a lot of those books of the covenant over time. With that said, most players do feel like they want to gem books of the covenant to accelerate their progress. That can in fact be done at the shop. There is no discounted way to get these books of the covenant, none in game. So the way that you effectively get a discount is by making this purchase during a very important time that is the More Than Gems event. The More Than Gems event comes up once every two months or so. You spend up to 25,000 gems on two different days. So it'll reset after the first day, and then you can do it all over again on the second day. 
So a grand total of 50,000 gems you can spend, and you get a bunch of extra stuff for having spent those gems. It is very common for free-to-play players to save up gems for Books of the Covenant to accelerate their castle, depending on just how much of their action points they're allocating toward forts and how active their alliance is. The other thing that you will want to spend some gems on during a More Than Gems event is Master's Blueprints. These are required to take most buildings to level 25. That includes your city hall, academy, hospitals, your production buildings, your war troop training buildings, and more. There are some buildings that won't require it. I don't think that the castle or the watchtower will require you to have master's blueprints, so some good news there. But the time that you'll want to accumulate these master's blueprints is going to be during a More Than Gems event. Don't worry about this until you're closer to City Hall 25. That is the time when you're going to want to have accumulated a bunch of these master's blueprints. So maybe around City Hall 23 or 21 is when you should start to think about, hey, how recent has a More Than Gems event been? And how many gems do I want to save up to at least get a few of these master's blueprints? I'm not saying you're going to upgrade all of your buildings to 25. The second you hit your City Hall 25, you, you won't do that but you'll want to have some of these on hand so you're not feeling like you have to buy them outside of a More Than Gems event. One trap item that you would be tempted to spend some gems on is Arrows of Resistance, and I'm going to advise you to not do that. Arrows of Resistance are available from Barbarians, and Barbarians are great to farm not only for their Arrows of Resistance because they also drop a lot of gems. In fact, battling Barbarians is extremely valuable, so valuable that one way you may want to spend your gems in Rise of Kingdoms, and that I do literally every single day, is to go in and purchase 500 action points for 100 gems. Now, you may be saying like, whoa, Chiskel, like, you want me to spend 100 gems a day? But the thing is that these barbarians at the upper levels drop a pretty reasonable amount of gems at a pretty reasonable drop rate. I have a really detailed video where I've gone in depth on exactly how lucrative that can be. I'll have a card up in the top for that. You can check that out at the end of this video by tapping the info button, likely in the upper right. But what I want to say about this is that you will not get a one-for-one -one return on your gems. In fact, you're going to not get half your gems back. Instead, those gems turn into other things like resources, experience, experience tomes, speed ups, and also those arrows of resistance. Time that with an event for some extra value, but I do spend 100 gems every day for pretty reasonable value over here, and it does seem like a reasonable choice to me as a free-to-play player if you still need lots of those things, which you probably will. Now, we've covered a ton of gem priorities in Rise of Kingdoms, starting with very simply making sure you've got that 7,000 gem stockpile for critical events, making our way toward Commander Wheels and having enough gems to be able to spin those to get the really easy to obtain sculptures at at least the 10 spin spot. Never spinning though, more than 100 times. I assume you won't even generally get close to 100, depending on how you're deploying your gems. I think saving them for other things is pretty important. And those other things include Books of the Covenant. That includes your master's blueprints so that you can upgrade your city without having a lot of delay, and you can do that in conjunction with a More Than Gems event to get really great value. But you may still be wondering, wait, just cool, but how do I get all these gems? And I've got a couple tips for you. First of all, I mentioned that, like, look, one option is to be in an alliance that's rallying lots of barb forts, and you might get some Books of the Covenant out of the deal. The other thing you can do is just farm the barbarians during events where that's really lucrative to do, because there's other things that will reward you. And you can turn those gems into Books of the Covenant, and you could do that during a More Than Gems event, and that's actually a really solid play. The other thing you can do is farm gems off of the map, and unfortunately, there's no way to search for gems. You're going to have to actually take a look around the map and find a gem tile like the one you see over here. Now, I've got a full detailed guide on gem farming. I won't go too in-depth on exactly how you do this. But my recommendation is that you use a large march of tier one troops, which march faster, and you run from resource point to resource point, collecting these in a day where you've got a ton of time to just sit there and watch the game. Really great opportunity for that would be if you're traveling, 
you listen to an audiobook, which you can get from, for free from the library, and you are watching the game while you're taking a bus ride somewhere. And I get that maybe travel is not something that's happening as much these days, or at least at the time of this video being filmed, but you get the idea. It's a good idle task that every 10 minutes or so, one of these gem deposits will finish up and you go, instead of from your city to a gem deposit back to your city, you go directly from your city to a gem deposit, a gem deposit, a gem deposit, a gem deposit, over and over until you're full of gems and then you return back to your city. I've known players that push upwards of 3,000 gems a day, but that is some really, really dedicated gem farming. I don't wanna give you the wrong impression, but it is achievable. And one thing that people do to accomplish that is they use their main account to farm gems and they use a farm account to accumulate resources, which they transfer over to their main card up in the top. If you wanna check out a video after you finish this one about how to create a farm account in Rise of Kingdoms. The last thing I wanna share about how you can get some gems is to make sure that you really do capitalize on the in-game events that reward you small amounts of gems here or there. And we're looking at an event now called Now or Never that doesn't happen to reward gems, but often there are events that are gonna give you that small amount of gems periodically, and you accumulate those over time, they really do start to add up. And if you're wondering like, hey, when might one of those events be around the corner, you'd always look in on the calendar and see if they advertise that gems is one of those things. Ark of Osiris is one of those events where gems are advertised. You wanna participate in Ark of Osiris. And if you're not in your Alliance's main Ark team, your kingdom should have a farm Alliance and you can join the farm Alliance and play Ark there. Because even if you don't win, there are some pretty sweet prizes you can get. But now we're moving really fully into the realm of just general free-to-play guidance. And I think this might be a good point instead to kind of summarize everything we've shared. Your gem priorities as a free-to-play player in the early game are going to be Commander Wheels, having 7,000 gems on hand for major events, and then accumulating gems as you see fit for Books of the Covenant to accelerate your progress toward T5. Master's blueprints are going to be absolutely critical. And at critical points, you're going to want to really prioritize VIP, which not only is going to give you daily value from the exclusive chest, but also the buffs along the way are honestly pretty reasonable and give you some incremental value too. If there are more advanced gem spending questions, please do drop them into the comments. I am very interested in supporting the free-to-play community and Rise of Kingdoms as best as I can. And although I'm a mega spender, a part of what that affords me is the opportunity to have tested out lots of different commanders, have had lots of different experiences, and advise you so that you don't make some of the same mistakes like I did, like thinking that Edward is a phenomenal investment. I think you can do better as just one example. Sorry, Edward. You've got some options beside Edward is what I'm trying to say that are gonna be a good bit better. So if you like this video, throw a like on it here as a show of support and a way of letting me know that like, hey, Chiskul, give me more of that free-to-play content. Subscribing to the channel will also give me that strong signal that, hey, free-to-play is what I want to see more of. And if you're looking for more free-to-play videos, I've got a playlist with a card up in the top taking you directly to it and more resources available to you in the description of this video. Until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.